Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started today, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to all the Patreon members because today was supposed to be the day of our raffle where we give away 10% of the channel earnings to one of these lucky Patreons. However, it was brought to my attention that Patreon does not allow you to do raffles through their platform. So I kind of felt a little bit stuck, right? Like I kind of promised a giveaway, but now I'm being told that I'm not allowed to do that giveaway in the manner that I was planning to. So when determining the fairest way to proceed, I wanted to get the Patreon's opinion on how they felt. And pretty much all of them said some version of they didn't join the Patreon for the raffle, they joined it for the community and the conversations and to get better at jujitsu. So that was really encouraging to hear, and I just wanted to give a shout out to all of you and thank you for your support while I'm still trying to kind of figure my way through the growth of this channel. And because a lot of the Patreons joined to have conversations about jujitsu, I think it makes sense to open up the Discord to everyone and allow everyone to join and contribute to these conversations. The Patreon will just be a way for you to support the channel if you would like, but it's not required to enter the Discord. So if you're interested in joining the Discord, please leave a comment asking for the link and I'll send it to you. So just want to kind of screen, make sure you're not a bot or a crazy person. And let's get into the video. We are going through our ADCC trials breakdown and we recently did a video on guard passing and now we're working our way into guard retention so if you haven't seen the guard passing video i'll leave the link in the description below as well as at the end of the video but this video is all about retaining our guard and the first thing that we need to address is posture so you'll hear gordon ryan and john donaher talk about the ideal posture for most things in jiu-jitsu is having a rounded spine. So your body will be shaped like a rocking chair or a banana. The second postural element we need to have is our elbow and knee connected. As long as our elbow and knee are connected, our opponent is not able to get chest to chest and pass our guard. So having our spine rounded and our elbow and knee connected is the ideal posture for retaining our guard and ultimately gives us the ability to counterattack our opponent. This is why half guard is such an effective and preferred passing position for a lot of people. It allows the top player to pin their opponent's head and shoulders to the mat, preventing them from rounding their spine, while also separating their knee from their elbow and breaking the two postural elements that we just talked about and allowing them to pass the guard. So one of the more popular movements associated with guard retention is the high leg. where we take our far side leg and thread it into the armpit of our opponent. This allows us to square up to our opponent and retain our guard. If our opponent is staying nice and low and preventing our far side leg from going into their armpit, then we can use our inside leg to recover our guard. And you can see the top player is focused on preventing that near side knee as well from coming in but ultimately the bottom player is able to penetrate with that near side leg and recover his guard. And a lot of times when this is happening live, it's gonna be a lot of side to side motion. So against a high level guard passer, they're probably gonna try and pass one way and maybe you'll hit a successful high leg recovery the first time. But as they go back to the other side, maybe they prevent your high leg. So now this time you penetrate with your inside knee to recover your guard. Now, unfortunately, it's not that simple because there are a few risks that we're taking when we're keeping our knee elbow connection and following our opponent to north south. The first risk that we're taking is them putting our feet over our head and pinning them to the mat either with their own leg or their hand and then ultimately settling into their guard pass. The second risk is that by keeping our knee and elbow connected, we have to take our back off the ground. And whenever our back is off the ground, our opponent has the opportunity to try to take our back. 
But if things go right for us from a guard retention standpoint, then we're able to keep our rocking chair shaped spine, our knee and elbow connected, and a nice frame in between ourselves and our opponent, which can ultimately make them pay for their guard pass attempt. Now, kind of sticking with that theme of making people pay, if they try and pass your guard and they fail, they should pay a consequence for that attempt. And a lot of time, people, especially nogi, just kind of try a knee slice just to try a knee slice. You know, they dive for a knee slice and hope it works. And if it doesn't, whatever, they just stand back up and try it again. So one way that we can make people pay is if we're able to get our bottom leg over to their far hip, it pretty much shuts down their knee slice pass. And then we're able to use that to pivot and transition into our K guard entry. And speaking of K-Guard, I dropped a video recently with a clickbaity title with a little K-Guard slander in there. And it kind of made a lot of people mad. So just to clarify, my point in this video was that back in 2019, for me, it was my first time really hearing of K-Guard. And I was able to use it to finish a lot of people just like Lachlan did in ADCC. If to right, you can defense. But nowadays, a lot of times when I do a K-Guard entry, it will lead to my opponent backstepping and we enter into 50-50, which is not a bad thing, right? Like people want to get to 50-50. But my point is just that the classic K-Guard entry for me is not really leading to a direct submission like it used to. It's leading more to a entry into the 50-50 position where you can then work to expose the heel. But even then, people are getting really good at hand fighting and slipping their heel, so we end up fighting from a 50-50 position. What I assure you is, even if do right, can defend, can defend, indubitably can defend. Hey, it's not easy, I'm not gonna lie to you, but if you're aware of a couple of keys, you can defend. And after posting the video, I received a few comments recommending doing this matrix transition off of K-Guard. So this is something that I really like and that I'm gonna be experimenting with moving forward. Okay, now back to talking about the knee cut and making people pay for attempting to do a knee slice attempt against you. And we talked about kind of an early counter is to get that bottom foot to their far hip to prevent them from knee cutting and ultimately set you up for a K-guard entry. Now, kind of a little bit of a later stage defense, but one that I think is really cool is that when they dive for a knee cut, typically they don't have control of your head and their weight is off to the side a bit. So this should allow you to do kind of a kiss of the dragon type entry. And like we talked about previously, off that kiss of the dragon, you can backstep into your opponent's legs and enter into inside Senkaku. Now going back to our knee slice scenario, we don't end up being able to backstep into our opponent's legs because our opponent respected our technique and grabbed our own leg and entered into their own leg entanglement and ultimately sacrificed their top position. And another way to counter the knee slice, like we've talked about many times on this channel, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, is to just use a butterfly half guard and force them to do a knee slice and put themselves in inside Senkaku. But now once we enter the position, this is where things start to get a little interesting and tie into what we've been talking about with inside spins. You can see the bottom players doing a really good job of threatening an inside spin and ultimately using their response to the inside spin to put him on their butt. So he was able to knock his opponent over, but he sacrificed control of the secondary leg to do so. Now, if we go back to our boy Owen over here, you can see as he's backstepping into his opponent's legs, he's reaching for that primary leg with his hand. And as he completes the inside spin, he still has control over that secondary leg while he's wrapping the heel of the primary leg. So I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but I think the ultimate goal is to be able to do exactly what the bottom player did by threatening an inside spin versus putting our opponent on their butt, but ultimately keeping control of the secondary leg in that process. Now, I'm not really sure entirely the best way to achieve this because it seems like he let go of the secondary leg and put his hand behind the leg of his opponent to help make his inside spin threat much stronger. And by his opponent overreacting to that inside spin, that is what allowed him to put his opponent on his butt. So letting go of the secondary leg and making that inside spin threat stronger may be the way to knock your opponent on their butt or get a successful inside spin 
But again, ideally, I think you hang on to that secondary leg when you're trying to off balance your opponent. So I hope you guys found the video helpful. I really appreciate all of the support recently and we'll see you in the next video.